Hello, my name is Ivory Gadsden. And my name is Maya Roach. And today we will be talking with Ashton Kerr from Vancouver, British Columbia. So welcome, Ashton. And our first question is, um, during your time at the University of British Columbia, why did you decide to study in the field of environmental sciences? Yeah, well, thank you so much for, for having me on this podcast. I really appreciate you reaching out to me. Um, so at my time at uh, UBC, I studied environmental sciences and I, had a, I did a concentration in land, air and water. And honestly, at the time when I went into university, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, I first of all applied just for sciences and at UBC, um, your first year is just general science and then you specialize in your second year. Um, so I applied for science and as I was going through my first year, I realized I don't really like biology. I don't really like physics yeah. and I don't really like chemistry. <laughs> so. Then I had this little crisis of why am I doing science? Um, then just through, you know, trying different things, I, I took an elective called uh, the Catastrophic Earth. And essentially it was about natural disasters. And so that introduced me to the world of earth sciences, which, um, mm -hmm. you know, it was a nice balance between all the different sciences. So um, after that, um, I just chose to, you know, do environmental science seemed like a good, a good you know, direction to take. And, mm -hmm. and looking back now, I think I, I can see that I, this was probably the direction I would have taken all my life, just knowing mm -hmm. my connection to nature and the things yeah. I've done growing up. But I, it was that one course I took as an elective was definitely my aha moment. Okay. That's awesome. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. So our second question is after receiving your um, degree how did that change your views on like climate change or any other environmental issues yeah so I think that throughout my degree I you know doing a science degree it was very um of course science heavy so you know I, I think that it really you know when I was in high school I feel like I got a glimpse and heard about climate change heard about environmental issues but never really learned about them yeah. Um, I'm actually from Calgary, Alberta, so, um, and my family actually was in oil and gas, and so it, it was interesting coming from that perspective and learning sort of like the, the how and the why, you know, our climate is changing, mm -hmm. and not only learning the science behind it, but learning how to communicate that science, mm -hmm. um, so, you know, understanding understanding how carbon dioxide that being added to our atmosphere does you know increase the you know increase the temperature of the earth so like learning that understanding it and being able to communicate it um I think it also was just like it's kind of like a gateway into learning about other things to other environmental issues um different courses that I took I think shed light on different challenges so you know I took a course on hydrology um that helped me think more about um like permeability of surfaces and like water runoff and yeah. you know just thinking about water conservation and all those types of things mm -hmm. um and then I also took a course on glaciology and so that made me think about how ice are melting and ice sheets are melting and so like the impacts of that, both environmental and social. So, so I think in summary, it just helped me become more aware, um, helped me be able to communicate it and yeah. also gave me opportunities to explore it more. So. Okay, that makes sense. So our third question is, um, during your university career, you were involved in various sustainability initiatives. Um, so could you give us further details on those initiatives? Yeah, so when I don't think I really started to get too involved in extracurriculars in university until I was in my third year. Um, I wish I got involved sooner, but I think I was just so overwhelmed with university as a whole and going from someone who got really good grades to, you know, university just kicks you in the butt. Yeah, right? absolutely. It turns everything on your head and I just really need a lot of time to, to grapple yeah. with that. Mm -hmm. But um, in my third year, I started getting involved with the Environmental Sciences Students Association, so ESSA. Um, and I applied to, you know, be one of their, I guess, I can't think of the word right now, one of their representatives, I guess, okay. if you will. 
So um, I ended up becoming the vice president of uh, sustainability for ESSA, the VP sustainability. Um, it was a new, new role in that aso student association at the time. But essentially what I did was I helped to organize events that promoted sustainability. And I also sort of spoke on behalf of our, of our association at like UBC wide things. So I served on like the UBC student sustainability council where essentially a bunch of different students from different faculties, different departments all came together and just, you know, provided input on initiatives that UBC wanted to implement. Mm -hmm. So whether that be, you know, uh, having reusable takeout containers, doing like, you know, um, like how to reduce waste, how to, you know, change the food options in the, in the cafeterias. So kind of providing insight on that on behalf, like from that environmental sciences perspective. Okay. Um, but then I also did, I also participated in the club uh, UBC C350. So that's sort of like, if you've, have you heard of C350 before? Um, I don't think so. Yeah, I haven't. <laughs> um, so essentially there's like, um, like if you, I believe C350.org is the um, website or maybe it's just 350.org, but essentially it's an organization yeah. that um, is trying to take climate action. Like 350 is the, was the, um, parts per million of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere at the time of the founding of this organization. And so um, we had a UBC chapter that was essentially just demanding um, de like, you know, decarbonization of UBC, moving away from fossil fuels and that kind of thing. So um, I was part of the um, team that was helping to convince and hold UBC accountable to, you know, their investments in fossil fuels and, you know, their you know, making sure they actually are the environmental leader that they say they are. So that's really good. Yeah. yeah so that was really cool. And and I guess my last one was the last thing I got involved in that on campus was I was part of our climate hub as well, the UBC climate hub. That was just starting around the time that I was finishing up my um my degree. But um I was able to essentially just like learn about more opportunities. Um to engage people in climate change. And it was much more of like an intro and periphery role that I was taking, I was more just learning, but it was interesting to like meet so many people passionate about climate change, yeah. not just from an environmental perspective, but also just from, you know, like a human perspective because mm -hmm. climate change impacts, yeah. you know, especially those who contribute the least to it are impacted the most, so. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true, yeah. So, yeah. and I guess like what motivated me to become an activist, I think it was just, seeing all the work that needed to be done and yeah. working alongside, like seeing there's people out there who actually want to do something about it and who yeah. want to make a difference. Yeah. It kind of felt like I'm not alone. You know, I'm not the only one who wants there to be a change. Yeah. And there's some other people who want change and they're already well on their way. So yeah. I can be part of that. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Tell us a bit about Green Teams Canada. So like what it is and what you do there. Yeah. So um, Green Teams of Canada is an environmental charity. It's a national charity. And we have two programs. We have one in the Lower Mainland and one in Greater Victoria. Okay. So essentially what we do, our mission is to connect, build, and empower diverse communities through hands-on activities that promote health, well-being, and environmental stewardship. We run nature-based activities that promote a connection to community, uh, which is really important. It creates a sense of belonging. It's great for our mental health. Um, mm -hmm. I think we all really felt this, especially in COVID when we yeah. connected yeah. with people. Mm -hmm. um, and then also connecting people to nature because people who have more experiences with nature are more likely to take care of it. Mm -hmm. So I am the program manager of our Lower Mainland Green Team. So I'm in charge of organizing and running all of the activities that we run across Metro Vancouver and uh, fundraising for those activities, building partnerships, doing our social media and marketing, doing, you know, some finance stuff. So I kind of do a little bit of everything, um, but we especially focus on engaging people who have never done anything for, you yeah. know, environmental stewardship or, or have ever thought about, you know, doing something before. So we really successfully engage a young demographic, like typically age 12 to 40, who's never done it before. And so we are the community engagement experts and we do activities like in, like invasive plant removals or plantings ultimately mm -hmm. to impact and empower people. 
That is so, really good because that's what we need to get people more involved, to like educate them and to get them to really understand what's going on. So yeah, and it's like we need more of I think of a people focused approach. Yeah. Right. Like I yeah. think that there's a lot of great initiatives happening, mm -hmm. but not a lot of people know about them. People don't know how to get involved. And you also just need buy-in. You know, like you see municipalities or, you know, provinces or countries even who have these great goals, but you mm -hmm. need support from those. And, yeah. you know, and yeah. climate change isn't just the responsibility of, you know, one person or a group of people or a company or the companies or the government. Like we all have a role to play. Yeah. So we yeah. can't forget about community. Yeah. So for our fifth question, it is why did you decide to work with Green Teams Canada? Yeah, so I actually started off as a volunteer um, for our Lower Mainland Green Team when I was in university. Okay. Um, I guess I started off in between my second and third year because mm. that was um, the first year that uh, in the summer I was here, you know, living in Vancouver for all by myself. I didn't go home to Calgary. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, let me get more involved in things around the region. Let me get more familiarized with the area and get, you know, different experiences. So I found, I found our group on Meetup and I, I really liked how it was easy to sign up for volunteer opportunities. I find that that's sometimes a barrier to volunteering. Yeah. You have yeah. to submit an application. You have to get a police check. You have to do all these things. Mm -hmm. And with this, I just had to quick going. And that yeah. was it, yeah. you know, so, yeah. so I tried, so I, I started off as a volunteer and I really appreciate, I just, I remember I felt so, it felt so great to go to that event and see so many people working together and mm -hmm. just feel appreciated. Mm -hmm. um, so that was in June of 2018. Um, then after that, I wanted to get more involved. So I ended up speaking to the executive director of the organization um, Lita Salatian, and she um, gave me different volunteer things that I could do, and eventually asked if I wanted to serve on our board. So okay, I served awesome. on our board of directors for two years. Um, it was one of those things where I think I was, I think I was like 21 at the time. I had no board experience, didn't <laughs> really even maybe know what a board was. Yeah. Wasn't sure that I, it was my place to, to you know just to be on a board of directors yeah, but, yeah. I thought, but I thought I'm young I'm the target demographic I have mm. a lot to bring even mm. if I don't have past board experience to bring or even if I don't have you know I have no knowledge on how the financials of an organization works I can still bring value and yeah, so exactly. so I just kind of dove into it and <laughs> uh, I'm so glad that I did because I learned a lot and um, when I graduated from university um, in 2020, that was when a staff position actually opened up with Green Teams of Canada. Okay. And so it was um it was a fairly natural transition from there. Like they asked if I wanted to be our pro the program manager, and I thought about it and I said, yeah, I do. So That's and awesome. here we are. I've been now in this role for two years. So it's awesome. been five years since I've been involved. Really cool. So like when you started, you said in 2020, did COVID affect anything with your position? Yeah, so 2020 was definitely challenging for literally everyone. Yeah, um, I think yeah. like when I, I didn't actually anticipate graduating in 2020 initially. Okay. Um, I graduated in November, 2020. So not with like most of my class in May. I <laughs> finished my classes in the summer because once COVID hit, I was like all my jobs that I was doing that I had lined up for the summer just <laughs> disappeared so yeah, I, yeah. I thought well I might as well just finish my degree so I did online yeah. courses I did um I did like a, a research project for sort of like my final like yeah. six credits okay. um and then yeah and then I started looking for for work and so with green teams of Canada specifically it impacted our ability to run activities mm -hmm. um because there was restrictions on on gatherings and um yeah. and that actually impacted our ability to fundraise because we actually use a fee-for-service model to run our activities mm -hmm. where essentially we kind of position it as like we're a contractor offering a service which is community engagement and okay. we, we develop partnerships where those partners provide funding for the activities okay. and we do this because it's a more financially sustainable way for yeah. us to be able to do our work mm -hmm. there's value there is a demand 
And you know, the only difference between us and a company who could be offering the same thing is we're not doing it for profit. Right. A hundred percent of that money is going into the work. So it's a really worthwhile thing to support. And we've got a lot of support on it. So it made it, it meant, meant that most of my job was um, you know, that we, we I wasn't running a lot of activities. Yeah. But my work is actually permanently from home and on my own schedule. So oh, okay. our work has always been virtual. Um, just because we have staff in different different areas of the lower mainland, um, different areas of Greater Victoria. And there's no one right place to really live or have an office because we work across regions. Mm -hmm. So my office is just my home. You know, I'm, I'm incredibly fortunate that in COVID, having just graduated with an environmental degree, because I think we mm -hmm. all know the environment was kind of, you know, climate, like maybe thoughts around climate change were sort of shifted when the pandemic yeah. hit and it was yeah. focused on, yeah. you know, on public health mm -hmm. and understandably so. But yeah. I know a lot of people really struggle to find work. And mm -hmm. so I'm very thankful that I had the opportunity I did. Yeah. Um, I also worked in a package-free grocery store prior to taking this job. So that was also mm -hmm. a interest. It was um a great way because grocery stores are considered an essential yeah. service. So yeah. I was yeah. able to, I did operations for that store and um, it was a great way to have some job stability in oh. a completely unstable, you know. Yeah, that's awesome. That's so cool. How does Green Team Canada support like your personal values and beliefs that I've been about? Yeah, so I think I really, when I was really thinking about what I wanted to do, you know, as a career, I, I still am always thinking about what yeah, I yeah. want to do. You, mm -hmm. you, you never stop. Yeah. Um, I think I really realized that as much as I really love my science degree, mm -hmm. I wasn't ex super excited about just doing experiments and doing research yeah. and you know, crunching numbers all day, yeah, you know, that, yeah. I, I can see the value in it. And I do love what I learned from science. Yeah. But I, I really, you know, what use of science if people don't understand it? And what yeah. use of science if we don't know what to do with it? You know, yeah. like science clearly shows that climate change is happening, mm -hmm. right? And that it's caused by humans. It's yeah. caused by, you know, our burning and release of fossil yeah. fuels. Yeah. Um, but yet, that's not really you know, what are we doing about it? We're not, you know, we need more action. And so people, and I think it's just, you know, there's still a lot of climate denialism going around. So yeah. we also need to, you know, help, help communicate science in a better way. So mm -hmm. that's what I kind of thought about. I want to be kind of like a liaison between like science and people. And okay. I want to, I want to inspire people, you know, I want people to, you know, the reason why I feel so inspired to take action to the environment is because I understand, like, I, I understand all the different function, all, how it works, like all the different interactions and how intricate and amazing and beautiful that is, yeah. you know, yeah. and I appreciate that. And I want to protect that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people just genuinely don't know or understand the environment, yeah. or what we can do about it or why we need it. Yeah. You know, like they don't understand all the ecosystem services that mm -hmm. it provides, how it, you know, soil purifies our water and, you know, trees help reduce flooding because they hold the soil, like all these things. Yeah. Um, so I really, I just really want people to care because it's not their fault that they don't know. Yeah. Right? yeah. They yeah. need the opportunity. They need things, you know, want the opportunity. So essentially I find that, you know, Green Teams of Canada helps me to focus on people because our work is focused on community engagement. Yeah. It's focused on first and foremost, getting people outside, mm -hmm. do interacting with nature. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not there to, you know, give every bit of information on invasive plants. You know, of course I do provide education on that, but that's not what, what we're there for. Yeah. We're there for people to feel like, hey, this is a problem. This is how I can actually have an impact on it. Mm -hmm. And I want to do more. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that it's just, it's, enabling me to enable others um, yeah. to take yeah. action. So I really value that. And I think too, because we our focus is on people, it means that what I, you know, what I kind of pursue or the types of activities we run is not restrictive. So yeah. we do different types of things. Like I want to do more things centered around climate change and centered around water and hydrology and stuff. And so that's an option. So I, yeah. I really, you know, I have a lot of I have a lot of freedom and I have a lot of support in my role to um, to do sort of what I want with it in the way that best serves the organization. So I really love that. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's good. Yeah. Yeah.
So, um, for our seventh question, um, it's kind of a broad one, but as an environmental activist, what challenges have you faced and how did you overcome them? I think that a lot of the time, whenever we think about and hear about environmental issues and activism, mm. it often feels quite negative. Yeah. It feels like, oh my God, the world's falling apart. You yeah. know, and yeah. what are we going to do about it? And, you know, then there's these crazy people over here, you know, doing like blocking the bridge and that's angering people. Like, I feel like it's a lot of just negative news. Yeah. yeah. And I think too, sometimes when you talk to people in the environmental movement, there is sometimes that, you know, just like, we need to do this now because it's, you know, if we mm -hmm. don't, it's going to be catastrophic. There's yeah. a lot of like, I mean, that's a reality, but it's also very harsh and it can yeah. be, yeah. you know, a little bit disempowering. Mm -hmm. So I think that the biggest challenges that I've faced is, you know, having a positive outlook for the future, Yeah, and, you know, celebrating the wins that we have. Mm -hmm. but and using those to propel more mm -hmm. you know so rather than focusing on how we're not doing enough focusing mm -hmm. on what we are doing and how we can do more okay. so I think it's just like reframing that yeah um, you know I think that we've all felt a little bit hopeless about the environment at times you know I think that climate anxiety is something that affects a lot of people you yeah. know at, least at some point in their life and so it's, you know, finding out how to turn that anxiety, that hopelessness into hope and action. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think it really is just, you know, a constant reframing of if you're feeling negative, just say, okay, what are we doing? What can yeah. I focus on that's good? And how can I use that as a way to leverage more? Mm -hmm. You know, like, it's, it's, it's very powerful. It's having like an abundance mindset. You're, yeah. you're saying, yeah. This is going to happen. We are going to achieve these things mm -hmm. rather than saying, oh, we're probably not going to do it at this rate. You know, this is, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's a balance between like, like being realistic and saying, yes, yeah, we supposed to happen yeah. now. We're not beating around the bush. Like this is yeah. serious, mm -hmm. but not doing so in a way that scares and paralyzes people. Yeah. That, um, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Answer. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really good point of view because you're right. So many people are like get so overwhelmed with all like the big words like catastrophic and all this that it just I don't know, it freaks a lot of people out. So they end up like getting too overwhelmed and not acting. So yeah, that's a really good point of view to have. And even just like, you know, we need big action, but small actions also add up to big actions. Yes, yeah. yeah. So not yeah. underestimating the power of an individual and of a small group of people mm -hmm. and remembering that you know like step small steps forward or still steps forward yeah of Absolutely. Course. You know, yeah. keeping that at the front of your mind mm -hmm. so using that as a motivator and don't get caught up in the negativity because it's super easy to yeah. so yeah. you know just focus on what we will do yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. awesome so our last question kind of ties into that it's just like as an environmental scientist and an educator, what advice would you give to young people who are concerned about like the state of the planet and want to help? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it really is just you got to start somewhere, yeah. you know. And it's a big prop, big scary problem, environmental yeah. problems, and they're very complex too. There's mm -hmm. no one right answer to how to solve things like climate change or you know habitat loss or like all these things. There's no yeah. one magical answer, but we just have to, we have to do something. Something mm -hmm. is better than nothing. Mm -hmm. And if we get others also doing something better than nothing, mm -hmm. that's worth celebrating. So, you know, I think I would, I would say take any, you know, concern and even just like fear sometimes that you have about the future and use it as a way to say, no, 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 I'm going to change that. Yeah. I'm going to change that narrative. I don't want to be scared. I don't want to be concerned. So mm -hmm. let me do something about it now. And let me get, bring others along the way with me. You know, like we can't go about this alone. Yeah. And the best part is, is that we're not alone. The environmental movement is huge. And yeah. especially in my work, when I engage people who've never done this before and are from all different backgrounds, experience levels, and, you know, fields of work, mm -hmm. everybody actually does care. Like they yeah. want to, 
yeah. they want to do something they just need mm -hmm. a means to do it so yeah they you know need. so i would just say just do something and you'll find out what works what what excites you and empowers you most you'll find some things don't excite you and empower you yeah. um and go find the thing that that does excite you and empower you because that's where you can have the biggest impact so mm -hmm. it's okay you won't, might not find it right away but trial and error is an excellent way to yeah. 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 figure out what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you for joining us today. It was really nice speaking with you. And you made a lot of good points. Yeah. And well, I really appreciate the opportunity to chat with you both and, and your time. And I hope that, you know, I'm still learning. I always have a lot to learn. I always have room for improvement. But I hope that... The experiences that I have had, I hope that others can, you know, use that as fuel mm -hmm. for themselves.